everyone, uh, we are continuing our limud of Sefer Yirmiyahu. Uh, he is the prophet who is prophesying, starting from around 40 years before the Chorban. He is warning B'nai Yisrael that if they don't do tshuva, there will be a devastation, there will be death and exile and starvation and destruction of the Beis HaMikdash. Uh, and he, of course, lived at the actual Chorban, Beis HaMikdash itself. And we are up to Pereke, which is, again, the division of Prakim is from the Goyim, and it doesn't really mean anything. It's really a continuation of the preceding prophecies. And the Navi calls out to the people, Shaitetu b'chutzay shirushalayim. Why don't you, Shvetsir, walk through all of the streets of Yerushalayim? Uru'u na uda'u. Look and see if you can find Bakshu Birchai Vaisa. Bimavakesh, look in the streets. Im Timtsu Ish. Can you find a true person, an Ish that is an Ove to look him? Im Yesh Isa Mishpat. Is there anyone that does justice who is not corrupted? Mivakesh Amuna, is there anyone? who seeks Amuna, true faith with God. And if you could find even one person, Eslach Law, I will forgive the city for that one person. Now, again, this Pusik is obviously very difficult. Uh, are you telling me, is the Pusik telling me, there was not even one person who was Isa Mishpat, not even one person that was Mavakesh, Emuna? Obviously, that's not true because, after all, you have your Miyo Anavi Lachalapakis, as well as other Nevi'im as well. So, this does not really mean you can't find a single person. You, you will be able to find Yechidim there and there. But it's really kind of a rhetorical expression that it would be very, very, very difficult to find such people. Such people were not common. And they were often in hiding because they would be ridiculed. And therefore, go in the street and see if you could find them. You didn't find them. The tzaddikim were not in the street. The tzaddikim, uh, people were mazalzal in the tzaddikim, so the tzaddikim remained kind of private. V'yim chay Hashem yemeyu. And even if you find people who are always swearing by the life of God, so it seems as if they're from and they're giving cover to Hashem, they're not giving cover to Hashem, they are in fact lying and swearing l'sheker. Hashem, now the Navi turns in tefillah to Hashem, Einecha haloi liamuna. Your eyes look for those who have a moon. Now, again, let me just point out, there is uh, an interpretive issue here. When it says Hashem is looking for a moon, what is a moon? So you need to understand something. Some translate a moon is faith in Hashem, but others point out that the real translation of a moon is not faith in Hashem, but it is faithfulness. So Anshe Emuna, the actual translation of Anshe Emuna, would not be men of faith, but men who are or people who are faithful in their responsibilities to Akadish Borhu, Kavyachal, people that Hashem can depend on. Similarly, we can call Hashem a God of Emunah. Now, God of Emunah doesn't mean a God who believes, but it means a God who is dependable and reliable because he keeps his promises. So that's uh, an interesting interpretive note that Emunah is not always a reference to faith, but it connotes both on the part of Hashem and on the part of people People or your Hagadish Baruch Hu, who is faithful, reliable, dependable, Anshe Amuna. So the Navi says, "You look for that quality of Amuna." Hashem looks in His army for the soldiers that will carry everything out. 
He kiso some, and when that was not found, you you smote them, you sent them yisurin. Chorban galas, even though it didn't happen yet, but uh, the asid is described in the avar as if it already happened. V'loi chalu, and they still don't respond. Kilisam, you even destroy them. Me'anu kachas musr. That's an amazing thing. With all of the things that happened, people do not learn the message. Chisku Panea misela, they made their faces stronger and tougher than a rock. Me'anu lashuv, and they refused to do tshuva. This is the downside of Am Kishay The Jewish people are called a people with stiff neck. Now that's a tremendous shavach that we're tough and uh, the pressure of the umos does not destroy us. But the problem is, when we become an Am Kishay Eirev, Kalapay HaKadosh Baruch then we're in, in big trouble. And now the Navi says, V'ani Amarti Achtalimheim. I said, maybe I can't blame them. They're poor, they're oppressed. Maybe they were so tzibrachin that they couldn't think of tshuva. Nayalu, they became foolish. Kilo yadu they didn't know what to do. Mishpat alikeyem. Meaning, Yermio is saying, all right, they didn't do tshuva, but there was so much that happened to them that they lost their kochos. So what I said was, Yermio is describing, El Chali El Hagidailam. Or maybe Hashem is talking. So I will go to their leaders, that's the so-called Sadiqim of the door. They will understand the mission. They will know what to do. The Adabra Isam, I will speak to them. Kihema Yadu Derech Hashem. They know the way to Hashem. Mishpat Elikeyem. They know the judgments of their God. But the Navi says, the so-called leaders were no better than the followers. Achema Yachdav Shavruel. They, together with the people, broke the yoke of heaven. They threw away the yoke of Hashem. Nitku Mosarot, they tore away the ropes that tied them to HaKadosh Baruch And al Cain, and therefore, Hikam Arye Miyar, that is why the lion from the forest will smite them. Again, Nebuchadnezzar was called the lion. Ze'ev HaRavot Yeshadadem, and similarly, there will be a wolf from the deserts that will plunder them. This is a remiss to the Bnei Yishmael and the Bnei Esav. Nomer shoiked al And the leopard will hurry on their cities. Some say there's already a remiss to Yavan way in the future. Kol ha-yetze mehene yitarev. And anyone who tries to leave will be torn up by the lion, by the wolf, by the leopard. Kirabu Pishayam, for their sins are many. Otsmu Mishuvaisayam, the way they went off the derech is awesomely large. Otsmu, in terms of how bad it was. A Lazais Eslachlach. And for all of this do you dare expect, Hashem says, that I will forgive you? All of your children have forsaken me. And they take oaths without even mentioning the name of Hashem. And I gave them satiety, and I gave them satisfaction, I gave them severe. And they still commit adultery by going to other gods. Ubeis zaina yiskaidadu. And they assemble by the houses of prostitution. So again, this both means literally, Gili Arayas, but also uh, worshipping Avaita Zara, we find is called adultery. We've seen it many, many times. Susim miyuzanim mashkim hayu. They got up in the morning to do their Averos like horses that are well endowed. So again, Rashi says, a well-endowed a horse, a stallion, has a very, very large aver and a tremendous taiva uh, for bia. And the Jewish people are described as being like a well-endowed horse 
who has to indulge its taiva both for Arias and for Avedazara. And like the sexually aroused horse, now this is Gili Arias, a man would turn to his a white to the friend of his, to the wife of his friend. For these types of Averos I should not punish, says God. A nation like this, I should not take vengeance? Of course I will. Alu Bishaira Seha Vishakasa. The enemy will climb sh- the Shura is the wall, the walls of Jerusalem and destroy it. However, I still tell you, Hashem sneaks it in, Bechala al But the enemy shall not create total destruction. In the middle of these Navuas of Chorban, HaKadosh Baruch Hu assures us there will not be a complete Chorban. Hasiru Natishai Seha. The enemy will remove many, many branches. In other words, he won't destroy the trunk, but many branches will be removed. Ki lo Hashem heima, because they were not truly devoted to Hashem. Ki bagai bagdu bi beis Yisrael u beis Yehuda, because both beis Yisrael, which is the ten tribes, already exiled. And Beis Yehuda, which is the tribe of Yehuda and Binyamin, they have rebelled against me. They have dealt treacherously with me, says HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Ki chashub Hashem. They denied Hashem. Vayayim lo, and they said, he's not God. And then they had false confidence in their invincibility. V'loi savay aleinu ra v'cherev v'ra v'lo nira. And bad things and sword and famine we'll never see. Vanavim yiyu l'ruach. Right, this is what the people are saying. And all of the Nevi'im that warned us were just blowing wind. Vahadibor ain't bahem. And they don't really have the power of speech that tells us anything. Ko yeyaselahem. But so it shall be done to all of these scoffers, that all of the Nevi'im that they're saying, Nevu'as are not going to come to pass, these scoffers will experience those Nevu'as. L'chein, Kai Omar Hashem elokeit tzavakos, so says Hashem, Yan dibarchem es hadavur hazeh, because you say these words that God will, you know, there is no God and the Nevi'im are worthless and we are invincible and we are powerful and the enemies cannot touch us. Hashem now says to your Mio, I will put my words in your mouth like a fire via am hazeh eitzim and the people that you're addressing, Klal Yisrael, are like wood. In other words, you will literally set them on fire in the sense that your words of destruction will result in a destruction. So, poetically, your words are like a fire and the nation to whom you are directing your words, namely the Jewish people, are like combustible wood. Behold, I am bringing a nation that is far away, Babylonia, Goy Eisan, who a strong nation, Goy Me Eilamu, an ancient nation, Goy Leiseda Lashaina, a nation that is so foreign that you can't even understand its words, its language. Voloi Tishma Mayadabra, you will not even hear what it's saying to you, which creates more panic when you don't even know what's being said. Ashpasai kikever pasuach. The ashba here does not mean a garbage heap, but ashba in Tanakh means the quiver. That's the bag in which you have arrows. And it's describing that the arrows and weapons are so huge that it's as if the uh, quiver, that means the case or the bag in which the arrows are kept, is as 
big as an open grave, a sign of death. Kulam gibayrim, and all of the Anshe Bavel are physically mighty and valorous in the conduct of war. Uh, they will consume your harvest and your bread. They will kill your sons and your daughters. They will consume your sheep and your cattle. They will eat up your vines, your grapes, and your figs. And the cities of your fortifications that you place so much trust in shall become poverty-stricken and be destroyed by the sword. But even so, Hashem says, the gam but even in those days, I will not destroy you totally. So these are Nechamas of Paranias, but Hashem is inserting little words of Nechama in the middle. And when you say, why is God doing this to us? And Hashem is saying, they're going to ask you, Yermia, why is this happening? The Amarta Alehim. You, Yermia, should tell them. Kasher Azavtem Aisi Vitavdu Elohein Echorbi Artsachem. Just as you abandoned me and you worshipped foreign gods in your own land, so you're so attached to the foreign gods, Cain Tavdu Zarim. So you will worship these gods in a land that is not yours. You like the Babylonian gods, so you're going to go to Bavel and worship the gods there. And declare this to Beis Yaakov, that refers to the Yidden that are more Pashut, meaning not the Tzadikim, and the rest of Yehuda. Listen to this message, you foolish nation that doesn't have a discerning heart. Like to hell, they have eyes, meaning it's not going on the idols, it's going on the Jewish people. They have eyes and they don't see what's going on. They have ears, and they don't hear. Nothing penetrates. Do you continue in your ways of not having Yiras Hashem? You don't sit there, you don't tremble in my presence? Asher, Samti, Chayel, Gavul, Layam, Chok, Olam, Vlo, Yavrenhu. So here, let me just point out, uh, this is something that the, the Psukim in Tanakh, or Nevi'im in particular, often highlight as a proof or a sign or a symbol of Hashem's total shalita over the universe. And that is the fact that, unless it's a tsunami or whatever it is, in spite of the tremendous power of the ocean, the sea, the waves always stop by the sand, which is the beginning of the shoreline. It's as if, it's described, as if the sand forms a wall that stops the sea. And the Navi is saying, the water should keep on going with force. But Hashem made the Chol Hayom a wall. Hashem stops the sea from coming. How can you not fear me? I made a boundary of sand that can stop the powerful sea. Chok Olam, and that is the law of nature. Velo Yavrenu, it will never transgress that law. The water will not go past the boundary. 
Vayisgashu, and even though the water is shaking around and turbulent, for lo yuchalu, it cannot go past. For homu galav, and the waves are riding high. For lo yavrenuhu, it will not go past that boundary. Even water knows there's a boundary beyond which it cannot cross. Yidden, don't you understand not to cross the boundaries that Hashem has given you? And that's the contrast. The water obeys my commandments. V'ilaham hazeh hayalev seireh umayreh. But to this nation, there is only a rebellious, wayward heart. Sorrow, they turn away from Hashem. When they go their own way. And they do not say in their heart, Let us fear Hashem Elokeinu. He is the one that gives us rain. Different types of showers. When it's needed. Shavuos. Chukais Kotzer Yishmer Lana. And during the Shavuos here is not the holiday of Shavuos, but it means, and there are weeks of harvest in which the rain does not fall, so the grain will ripen. In other words, why don't they make a cheshvan? Why don't they think of all that Hashem has given them? And the Navi says, this is what Pirkei Avos calls Avera Gaireres Avera. It's not just my Yetzirah makes me sin, okay? But the sin itself intensifies within me a rebellious, rebelliousness of God against Hashem so it'll be easier to do the next Avera because the sin plugs up our heart and also plugs up our mind. The Navi is saying, B'Shem Hashem, how can you not fear me? Even the water doesn't cross my boundary. But you do it over and over again. But that's because your sins have led you astray. And it is your Averos that have kept the goodness of Hashem away from you. Both the brachos of political autonomy and also the insight of understanding has been taken away from you. Ki nimtsu. Biami Rishaim. In my nation, there are so many Rishaim that can be found. Yashur Kishach Yukushim. Yashur. They look at traps that can capture people, meaning they look at a way to trick people or cheat people in business. Hitzivu Mashchis Anoshim. They set up mechanisms to destroy people, Yokaido, that they could trap. So again, this is moving to social justice. We were primarily talking about the sin of Abayi Zara and the sin of Gili Arayas, and now it mentions the victimization of people, the predatory business practices uh, that hurt people. Kichluv mole aif. As a clove is like a, um, it's like a chicken coop, a coop. As a coop is filled with birds, filled with chickens. Cain, Betayim, Muleim, Mirma. Their homes are filled with deceit and with lies. And all came God love Yeshua, and that's why they grew rich and wealthy, because they cheated. Shamnu, Ashtu. Gam Avru Divrei Ra. Shamnu. They have grown fat. Ashtu. Again, they have prospered. But they did this by transgressing with evil. 
Din Lidanu, the judges did not adjudicate. So if a rich person victimized a poor person, the judge would not do anything. Maybe the judge himself was bribed. Din Yasum Yatslichu. I'm sorry, uh Din Lodanu, Din Yasum Yatslichu, they did not protect the orphan. Mishpat of Yainim Lashafatu, the lawsuits of the poor were simply ignored. So, and again, it repeats a passage we had before. On all of this, I should just forget about it. A nation like this, I should not take out my vengeance. Of course, there's a Mida Sadin. There will be desolation and there will be disgust throughout the land. Hanavim, the prophets of Avodah Zarah that gave them false hope, Nibu Bashakar, their prophecies are lies. Hakayanim, all the Kayanim are supposed to be the spiritual leaders, and did not help. Yirdu, Al Yedayim, they will be ruled by the enemy. The army of Vukain and my nation that loved these Nevi'im and these Kohanim because their message always was, I'm okay, you're okay, we're invincible, the enemies can't get us. All of the nation, all of the Jews rather, that heard this message and were content and didn't do a cheshben nefesh or didn't do tshuva, ma tasu liacharita, what will you do when this story comes to an end, and it will come to an end. So again, it's, a, it's essentially a very, very pessimistic and dark and frightening message, but Hashem does intersperse that, number one, there will always be some Yidden that will survive, and number two, all of the Yidden have the chance to experience Geula if they do tshuva. That is the end of Perek Hay.